hot flashes, night sweats, hair loss, and feelings of depression. What do they all have in common? Hormone imbalances. But what made them fall out of balance? And what's the best way to test for these imbalances? Today we're going to discuss that and more at Sunflower Shop. The subject of hormones is a big topic. Whether we're talking about PMS, menopause, or thyroid problems, many women don't know where to start. So to help you get started, we called in an expert. Dr. Michael Fight of Fort Worth, Texas is here to help us piece things together. Thank you for being here today, Dr. Fight. Thanks for having me. Having delivered over 7,000 babies in your lifetime, I'm sure you've seen your share of hormone problems. So why do you think most women are having hormone imbalances today? Well, it's a combination of multiple factors, but it's normal physiology. Uh, a woman goes through puberty, she goes through her reproductive age, uh, she goes through what's the, called the premenopausal stages, and then she goes through menopause. Each one of those areas is a, is a transition, and transitions are always tumultuous. When you have had your children, and then you're transitioning into the time when you'll stop having uh, menstrual periods, we call that perimenopausal or premenopausal. And it's tumultuous because you have a hormone change. Your estrogen levels are still very high and they're sort of like a roller coaster. They're all over the place. But your progesterone levels, uh, they rapidly diminish. And progesterone is the menstrual timekeeper. And as it goes away, you start having irregular, unpredictable periods. You start having side effects such as PMS. You have weight gain. You have irritability. So it, it's, uh, it's very common for women. And that's what they present when they come to see me and many of their physicians. So what are, what's some of the lifestyle problems that are creating these imbalances though? Well, you hit right on it. Unfortunately, when patients come to me, uh, they think that pills, medications are going to correct everything. Uh, they can help, but uh, a lifestyle without physical exercise, without eating properly, without drinking specifically plenty of water, uh, causes lots of problems. The term bioidentical hormones, what really is it and how are you using it today? Bioidentical means that it's the same hormones produced by your body before you were put on any kind of medications. It's estrogen, the estradiol, it's the progesterone, it's the testosterone. Unfortunately, all physicians are trained the same. Whether you're in medical school or residency as an OB-GYN doctor, an internal medicine specialist, or a family physician, we're all trained to use oral synthetic hormones. There was a study done from 95 to 2002 called the Women's Health Initiative, or what's called the WHI. And they had a, what's called a, a placebo double-blind study, which is a, the best kind of study there is. And a third of the women, about 10,000 women, took sugar pills, and they didn't know it. About a third of the women took a hormone with estrogen in it, and about a third of the women took estrogen and an anti-estrogen called Provera. Uh, these women went on for about seven and a half years and the only people that knew what they were taking was a group of physicians behind the scenes who monitored their side effects. Uh, on July 9, 2002, they stopped the study because they noticed that one group had more heart attacks, strokes, breast cancer, phlebitis, blood clots, pulmonary embolus, not things you want. And they said, my goodness, what if it's sugar? We need to stop the study and tell the world how bad sugar is. Well, we know how bad sugar is, but it wasn't sugar. It was the combination hormone of estrogen and the anti-estrogen. And that began my process of research, studying, uh, reading everything I could get my hands on. And I realized that there was a better way of doing things. It's not accepted uh, by about 95% of physicians. So you're definitely stepping out of line when you do this. But I think it's a much safer, lower dose, healthier method if women do need hormones. 
but not every women do. Not all women do need enormous. And speaking of that, you do something different in your practice. You know, most gynecologists I've seen always use blood work to test the hormones, but you do something different. Can you explain what you do? Well, I do uh, salivary testing. Um, there are a lot of physicians who do bioidentical hormones who do blood testing, and I think that's fine. If they've learned to do it from that standpoint, that works for them. But I was trained that blood tests measure only the protein carriers in the blood that carry the hormones. And salivary testing, which you collect sal saliva from your cheeks, measures the exact same hormone that's found in your brain, your breasts, in your uterus, in your vagina, in the fatty tissue around your hips and your waist. And it's less invasive. You don't have to have a needle stick. And you can collect four samples during a day mail it off to a, a, a reference lab that knows how to extract the hormones out of the saliva. And for me, it gives me a better understanding of what the hormones are doing in the tissues, not in the blood. And that's what I like. And I know you use some nutrition in your practice, particularly vitamin D you like to talk about to your clients. Explain why is that so important in what you do? Well, uh, up until about five, seven years ago, I believe the same thing that everybody else does about vitamin D is that a little bit's good for you, but if you get too much, it'll hurt you. The problem is, is that the people that took up the banner were the uh, manufacturers of makeup and lotions and creams that women put on, and they all have SPF in them now, which blocks the sun. Some people say that 95% of Americans are deficient in vitamin D. When I heard that, I, I'm sure my mouth was open because I just didn't believe it. And the, the lecturer said, well, I see a few doubting Thomases in the audience. Go home and test some of your patients and see what you find. And I've tested about 4,000 women in the last five years, and we found 17 that had normal levels. Vitamin D boosts your immune system. If you get your level up high enough, it lessens your risk for simple things like colds, sore throats, and flus. But it can decrease your risk for significant problems for women, breast, and colon cancer, for men, prostate and colon cancer, but also certain autoimmune disorders like high blood pressure, uh, type 2 diabetes, adult onset diabetes, rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, multiple sclerosis. Vitamin D doesn't give you energy. It doesn't make you feel better. But I have had, surprisingly, many patients who have gotten their levels up and have had lessening of their problems with seasonal allergies, colds, sore throats, flus, even improvement in some of their autoimmune disorders. So I, I feel very passionately about it. Once you're 40, you should have it tested. And I take 5,000 international units every day. Uh, that doesn't make me... Uh, the healthiest person in the world, but I need all the help I can get. Dr. Fight, I sure appreciate you being here today and sharing your expertise. Well, I appreciate it very much. I appreciate the Sunflower Shop and what they provide for the community. If you want to learn more about hormones or other health topics, come see us at Sunflower Shop, where great health is just a way of life.